Hello, and welcome to our Entrepreneurial Essential Series. I am Laura Merriam Smith of the Northwest Innovation Resource Center, and today we have with us Matt Rose of Apana to talk about applications of technology. In particular, we're going to be talking about some IoT technology that can be really beneficial for small businesses um, potentially to be thinking about for their business. So, hi, Matt. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, glad to be here, Laura. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. This is great. Why don't you give us a little bit of background about yourself and Apana before we, we dive in and start talking about uh, this technology? Well, I'm, I'm from Bellingham, and uh, about seven years ago, we started Apana, and uh, we do uh, water efficiency as a service for commercial and industrial buildings. We're an IoT hardware company, and we're also a, a software platform company, and we provide an end-to-end -end experience for uh, large commercial customers such as Walmart or MGM Resorts uh, in order to manage uh, how they consume water within their environment. Oh, great. Uh, well, I look forward to talking about this, uh, this technology a little bit because it's really interesting. And I think um, especially as people are thinking about the types of technology that, you know, they may not be useful for their business in particular at the moment, but something that they might be thinking about um, in terms of how their physical spaces get managed, um, those kinds of things, um, along with how IoT can play a role for them. So let's talk a little bit about some of this technology. So IoT, maybe you could give just a, a little bit of a background about what IoT means, and then specifically the subset of it that we're talking about today, uh, Laura. Well, IoT stands for Internet of Things. And uh, the, an older term for it used to be machine to machine communication. It's essentially how uh, devices within an industrial or built environment are connected to the internet. And uh, there is a physical meter or sensor in a place and then that is connected via a wire or a radio uh, to something that can, that can uh, push it up into the cloud and, and the internet. And that's that's basically the evolution of what's happening within that environment. Great, so then what's the particular type that we're talking about with LoRa? What's that um, under the umbrella of IoT? Well, LoRa stands for, uh, is, is low power radio. And what it is, is is we, we connect devices to the internet uh, using uh, wireless radio technology. And LoRa is one that's specifically designed to be very energy efficient. Mm -hmm. So you can design things that can attach to a sensor that can last on battery for years and, and stream information to the internet instead of having so the incurring the expense to put uh, power out to a specific device or changing batteries at a very high frequency. And so it, it, it creates a uh, value on those fronts. Sounds like uh, sounds like something that if you're if you don't have a lot of access to an area, um, you know, like if your your um, uh, water systems within piping within a, a mm -hmm. building, uh, you, you don't want to have to be in there changing out batteries very often. So it seems like seems like that kind of technology could be really useful. Are there other um, are there other applications that are good in business? For that somebody might be thinking about for that type of technology in particular? Well, one of the things about LoRa, it has really good range. And so for agricultural use, uh, for monitoring uh, moisture or, or other items within the agricultural environment, it's, a, it's an excellent technology. And also uh, for uh, things that are long ranges, monitoring pipelines, thing or or towers that a set of towers over a, a, a long air over a wide geographic area. It's it's very useful and efficient to um, uh, monitor certain things within those types of environments too. So maybe let's talk a little bit about some of the types of things that you might monitor because obviously when we start talking about technology, we talk about the Internet of Things. It's data collection, and so we're we're obviously trying to to get um, some information from some location to another location using this. What, you know, so you mentioned the, the agriculture is one of those, but what, what is it about the data that, you know, maybe there's some, is there something in particular that could be really good about using this system versus just maybe other types of IoT systems? Is there anything that's really beneficial or is just IoT in general? What? Well, I think in the world of IoT, there's a trend, what, it, it, there's a transition to digitization. And it's one of the last industries in the world uh, that 
it, it that is a transition to digital. So water assets, pipelines, valves, pipes within buildings, pipes uh -huh. within machines. They're, 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 it's it's very difficult to connect a hard physical asset or, or monitor right. a point and, and and get that information back to the cloud and and so it's 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 for those types of um um uses that that laura can be a catalyst in order to um initiate programs in order to monitor how you're consuming it's it's 2001 and over 95 percent of all industrial and commercial uh entities are not yeah. managing their utilities or not more than just what's basically available from their utility and and in today's world when you monitor how you know how many gallons of water does it take to produce uh, uh, a gallon of product or, or mm -hmm. a amount of product is, is is to have the is to be able to track how you consume uh, your commodities and resources and and it's sort of the last frontier on digitization, and uh, that's that's and these technologies are coming up, and companies like ourselves are taking advantage of that in order to uh, sort of create the way for people to get their minds around um, managing their their uh, consumption of utilities and 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 other items that are difficult to digitize. Okay. Yeah. So. Um... Do you have any examples uh, of how you guys have managed to use this or examples within other industries that you could share to give people an idea of, of how that works? Yeah, for example, uh, one, of, one of our large, our largest customers is Costco Wholesale and, and our water monitoring system is within uh, over 700 of their warehouses in North America and in Asia. And from that, what we've, what we've done is we've been able to install our our LoRa networking equipment with each, in each of the warehouses, and then stream water data from from all those different warehouses all across the place uh, to the cloud. And so our customer gets one dashboard with all 700 of their sites, and then from that we're able to perform analytics and and provide value in other ways and alerting features and 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 in a sense the the new buzzword that's coming out is called. A digital twin. We're able to sort of mm. provide a virtual um, representation of how water is being consumed in their environment. And then from that, they can make, we can, uh, there's compliance on standard operating procedures, uh, accountability for servicing of equipment that consumes water, irrigation accountability, uh, all these items come up. And, and we can save our typical customer anywhere from 10 to 25 percent on their water consumption by just being mm -hmm. uh, paying attention on how it's consumed and and uh, exploring anomalous use so you guys have that available for your commercial customers it sounds like something that would be beneficial for residential customers too well residential would be wonder wonderful yeah. uh, our, our price point's a little too high for that to make sense uh, <laughs> at this point but we're always uh, we're always working to reduce our overall cost so we can get into more light commercial and others I mean yeah. water is still relatively inexpensive, but it is it is increasing in price faster than college tuition and healthcare, and so and yeah. also scarcity and the other items that are that are coming up in the news. It's becoming more and more of a of a of a, of a challenge, and and then also our aging infrastructure and water uh, has some high capital costs that are coming up that will need to be addressed. And so the more efficiency, whether it's fixtures uh at the end at the end or uh systems that can monitor and explore for anomalous use leaks waste things yeah. like that that's where uh that's where the next level of business is is going uh for for efficiency and and lean initiatives and those types of things yeah oh that's great and i i remember reading another um another story about the winery uh that you guys had worked with i think that's another great example of um from an agricultural perspective um Yes, exactly. Value, a huge value for, for somebody that's a water intensive industry like that. Yes, and indeed, uh, Fetzer Winery is, is a great customer. Uh, they took our system and their operations department uh, uh, took charge of it and they were able to reduce their consumption by 25 percent. By and, and what they did is they really studied how they were consuming water and that water told a story of how their digital twin sort of told the story of how it's being consumed. Why is this shift using two times the amount of water to produce the same amount of product as the other shift? Yeah. Why is this part of the process 
uh, consuming so much more um, seasonally and, and, and things like that. And then from that, they were able to drive those efficiencies, which made, uh, which they were able to one, uh, save the water and capture those direct costs, but then also get efficiencies within operations, efficiency within other parts of the business, uh, armed with the, the data from the story that water consumption told. Yeah, yeah, that's great. How, so how do you see, you know, technologies like this? Uh, obviously, there's the, the work that you're doing, um, you know, specifically for, for Apana, but like even outside of that and getting into other industries that might be able to utilize the technology, are there, are there applications that you can see that help with, um, I mean, sustainability is a big drive for a lot of companies. Is there anything in particular that this technology can do to help companies, small or large, think about how it's helping them? Well, the thing we always say, it's, it, it, as I said earlier, it's, it's 2021 and it's ridiculous that large businesses and enterprises aren't aren't uh, keeping track of how they consume these uh, resources as closely as they do a lot of other things within their business. And, uh, and so that's a, that's the primary benefit. And then sustainability wise is that, uh, water is a, uh, is a precious resource and becoming yeah. more, more that way. And so, so the sustainability impacts is one, is the money you save on water goes directly to your bottom line. So that's less product you have to sell, that's less in, in other areas. And so we went over, CFOs right away. If we can turn water into yeah. semi-controllable expense on on their sheets, and and uh, and that's that's sort of the power of of of, of and it, and it's common sense too is, is is keeping track how you consume and 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 with all the other businesses that are tracked very closely, it's it's just one that needs to um, transition to digitization and to realize those benefits. Yeah, yeah, I am. Um... I, I find it so fascinating because it is one of those things that from a business perspective, um, so much of those types of things like your water usage or your electrical usage or your other things you try to, you try to monitor very closely, but you know, they're always a variable cost and they're always challenging to um, identify ways to be able to, to save money. So this is, um, this is a huge value for companies to be able to do that, mm -hmm. to be able to use that technology mm -hmm. in that way. Yes, and 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 it and I think there's a misperception that it, it's easy to set up the monitoring for these types of things, and that it's it's a commodity, and it's very easy to. It's actually very hard to uh, connect the devices to to networks and things, and and that uh, and, and it is it is generally a, a capital expense in order to do that, but uh, the benefits um, are 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 definitely. Um, uh, we, we would argue in most cases make, makes the investment worth it with most of our customers receiving uh, an ROI between three and 18 months on, on their projects by just saving uh, the water. But the, you yeah. need to censor it and, and, and you need to set up the IoT infrastructure yeah. correctly to do that. And there's a lot of uh, quality uh, challenges with, with other vendors and things in, in the space. So I think there's a reluctance sometimes to pull the trigger on those projects. And, and ROI of three to 18 months is really good. <laughs> Just, I was thinking about things like solar. If, if people try to convert to solar, it's usually longer um, before you're, you're paying back, um, you know, the investment that you might make to completely move a building or a residential facility to, to something that's solar. So. Yeah, well, a good deal. You, argue, you can argue, are we pricing it right? But, it, but at the same <laughs> time, uh, uh, no, this is for, to get the networks established is very important. And then, uh, yeah. the, um, you know, we, we do charge a, a SaaS yes. uh, right. service. And, 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 and from that, we, we get our, uh, our long-term um, revenue yeah. and benefit from that. But it's, uh, um, yeah, the hard part is, uh, in some cases, you have to cut pipes in order to put in meters. In other cases, mm -hmm. you have to uh, uh, put on a more sophisticated meter that can be more expensive. But uh, to do it right, uh, we'll put we'll put a business in the in the best position to uh, capture the benefits and succeed. Oh, well, thank you. This has actually been a really fascinating conversation. I um, mean, you and I have talked before about um, uh, stuff along those lines, and I just I continue to find it very fascinating. Hopefully, people listening in today do. Is there anything else we didn't cover that you think is important for people to consider and we get through get through most of it? 
no, no, no. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to evangelize uh, the benefits of, uh, of monitoring how you consume resources and that it is the, um, uh, it is a significant project to get the, the correct equipment and things in place. But once it's there, you capture the benefits. And again, it's 2021. Uh, baby monitors have more functionality and, 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 and artificial intelligence and, than, than how people are managing their uh, uh, huge expenses on their. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting where people are putting money into smart homes sometimes doesn't seem like the places where you're going to get the most benefit out of it. Like from a financial perspective, you might get the most um, emotional benefit, you know, and being able to control all your electronic devices and your lights and everything else, which, uh, you know, can have some monetary, but it just seems like there's a lot of places that, that um, in the long run, it'll be interesting to see how homes get built in the future, if there'll be a lot more of those devices. Oh, indeed. It's, it's really cool. And, and, and you bring up a good point. A, a lot of the benefit our customers are, are, are secondary benefits. It's not just, it's, it's, it's catching things before they fail. So, yeah. uh, Catching pieces of equipment, whether it's in your house, your swimming pool, or or uh, or, uh, or something, or a large cooling tower, it, there's predictive uh, failure tells that the water tells, and that, that can prevent untown, uh, unplanned downtime for a process line. Yeah, uh, th those types of thing, uh, things and benefits, and then also insurance-wise, water. Uh, a large part of insurance premiums are based on water uh, mm. risk. And uh, do you have a pipe break or, or, uh, or, or these types of events, the sooner you stop it, the, it's gonna have a, a exponential impact on, on the re mitigating the impacts. And that's, that's another uh, item that uh, uh, keeping a close eye on consumption can. Is that, um, I'm wondering if that's something that, uh, that we got a chance to cover earlier on, because it's something you and I talked about before about the ability to analyze data and being able to make sure that you're getting the right types of data, the clean data that would help, I would think, with that kind of thing of, of being predictive about things that might be happening. Mm -hmm. thing, uh, I think you and I had talked about it before at one point in time about um, how um, this type of technology in particular, you know, it's very hard to get um, some of that good data um, that you need and that this technology is really good for helping you get that, um, I think you had called it before, clean data. Yep, clean data. The, the, the simple premise is uh, your analytics is only as good as the data that you feed it. So garbage in, garbage out, quality in, quality out. And it's, yeah. and, it's and, and as I said, it's very difficult to, uh, to get uh, clean data from very remote sources uh, to the cloud. There's that, there can be data corruption, missed messages. And, and that was a problem that we had when we tried other people's um, uh, technologies mm -hmm. when we were trying to solve this problem. We, we had we figured out we had to solve it on our own to get to the quality that we needed to perform to be able to perform analytics that were to a value. But uh, uh, that's a that's a that's a key point. I think that's one of the strong suits of Laura. It's a, it has very, very, very high quality uh, a wireless um, uh, transmission of data with at a high quality and in, in that we're able to um, take advantage of that and uh, in industrial and in commercial environments. Yeah, yeah. great. All right, we touched on a couple more things there. So that was great. Yeah. Um, thank you again uh, for taking the time. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, it was good talking to you. Yeah, glad to be here, Laura. Thanks for having me. Thanks. All right.